Chef Andrea Carlson is our first speaker tonight. So Andrea uh, has a long background in restaurants as a chef all over the city, and I'm sure she'll go into it, but uh, currently she owns and operates Burdock & Company, Farm to Table, have a restaurant on Main Street in Vancouver. She also operates Harvest Union Foods, and previously she was a chef at the Bishops. So please join me in welcoming Andrea Carlson. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Um, so I'm going to talk about sustainability um, as it uh, relates to my experience in restaurants over the past 20 years or so. Uh, when I first started in restaurants uh, in the early 90s, there really wasn't much of a concern for sustainability. The focus was uh, still on, you know, sort of European cooking traditions, importing the finest product you could from wherever in the world it came from. Um, and there was only one company that I remember at my first job at Starney's Restaurant uh, under Chef Adam Busby that was delivering a unique product and that was the Glorious Garnish and Seasonal Salad Company <laughs> Limited. Uh, which Susan Davison uh, was a part of back then. And uh, they started in 1986 with a uh, uh, celebration salad mix among other things. Uh, for Expo and they were an organic uh, local food company that was creating, growing really exceptional, beautiful produce that got all of the chefs in the city excited. Um, so they were the only people back then that were doing something like that. And for the next decade or so there really wasn't much, um, much change in the scene from my perception of things. Uh, then coming into the past decade we've seen a number of uh, changes to um, to Vancouver's opportunity for restaurants to be sustainable. Uh, one of the biggest programs that came about was OceanWise, created by the Vancouver Aquarium, and that was based on the Monterey Bay Aquarium's uh, model. Uh, it's been researched that over 70% of uh, seafood is consumed in restaurants, which gives restaurants a tremendous opportunity to educate their diners about sustainable seafood. So that is how that program was born. Um, so that was one, uh, one program that came about in the past decade. Um, Chef's Table Society, uh, a gathering of uh, BC chefs whose mandate is education um, and sustainability, reaching out to their members in the Vancouver food community um, and giving them opportunities to connect, to learn about uh, different growers and uh, sustainable options within our realm. A third group that uh, came about back in the day, about a decade ago, was Green Table. And uh, they were offering a measured system of accountability to restaurants, so they could, they would come in, do an evaluation of your existing, um, your existing systems, everything from your uh, water usage, your energy usage, and they would offer um, opportunities and um, ways that you could improve your business basically. So everything from composting, increased local food purchasing, waste reduction, and lowering your energy and water consumption. So these were all uh, really significant um, and measurable ways that restaurants could uh, become more green and more sustainable and also financially benefit from putting these practices into play. Um, a couple of other things that have been on the go for seven, five to seven years, Project Chef and Growing Chef. Uh, these are a couple of grassroots organizations that go into elementary schools using um, community volunteers as well as chef volunteers as educators to run a program teaching young children about uh, growing food, nutrition, where food comes from, and urban agriculture opportunities as well so that is another uh, <clears throat> great uh, couple of programs that have come up in the last little while and in addition I think one of the biggest um, biggest um, changes or movements for Vancouver was the 100 mile diet book that James and Alyssa published probably a decade ago um, it made a huge impact on the Vancouver local seasonal food consciousness 
from where, from how I perceive it in a restaurant, people were starting to become more aware of seasonal eating and starting to get out to farmers markets more. Um, increases in magazines and blogs, things like what Richard is doing, um, online magazines as well as print magazines like Edible Vancouver, also helping to further stimulate Vancouver's interest in seasonal eating. Um, in the past five years, there's been a huge increase in consumer awareness. Uh, people are asking to know where the food comes from. It's not just, um, you know, it's not just produce, it's everything from where the meat's being grown, how it's being raised. Um, many, many farmers markets are um, popping up all over the city. In the summertime, there isn't a neighborhood in Vancouver where you can't find a, a farmer's market to, uh, to get to. And that access has been a, a huge opportunity for restaurant chefs to get out and get to know the people growing the food and bring in really fresh daily produce to their restaurants. Um, big growth in urban agriculture. Groups like Soul Food, Inner City Farms, Urban Digs, all of these growers are uh, adding another layer to what Vancouver restaurants are able to access and provide to their customers. Um, things that we, you know, five years ago wouldn't have had access to on a large scale, like um, really, you know, eggs, for example, that were uh, coming from a really small farm. These are things that we now have the opportunity to purchase. Um, all of these changes and growth in Vancouver gives our restaurants an opportunity to be more sustainable in their practices. And uh, most fundamental being the building and maintaining of relationships with the people who grow our food. I believe it's the most important component of restaurant. Uh, restaurants contribute to a sustainable local food economy. Thank you.